Welcome back to Sleep with Sun in Place, and today we're doing the third video in the Technical Readout 3060 Ranking Series. Today's video is all about the vehicles in the book. Since there's only about 30 of them all total, I decided to do both the clan and the industry vehicles at the same time. Because the way I rank vehicles, which you can see the ranking chart, Right there. I, I can't tell which way side it's going to be on. Um, it pretty muchly, I rank them how they perform in their kind of like their category. Like, you know, like an APC category or an assault craft category or an artillery craft kind of thing. So I'm a little bit less worried about, you know, how they are compared to each other or how they perform in that role, essentially. So I can rank both Interstellar and Clan at the same time. Because trust me, some of these clan vehicles, since the clans don't really care too much about vehicles, unless you're Hell's Horses for the most part, are pretty bad. So, with that said, let's jump into this. I mean, as the ultimate example of what the first vehicle in the book is, I... This is... <laughs> the vehicle entry is called Utility Vehicles. These are all vehicles that weigh between 10 and 70 tons. <laughs> and they are largely different sizes of cargo vehicles. The 10 tonner carries 6 tons of cargo and moves at 5 feet. The 50 tonner, which is, oh sorry, the 10 tonner is called a flatbed truck. The 50 tonner is the battle mech recovery vehicle. It uh, moves at 6 9 and has enough space for 10 tons of cargo. So you're going to need several of these trucks to pick up a mech. And the third one that weighs in at 75 tons moves at 4 6. And it's called a heavy battle mech recovery vehicle. And it has 30 tons of cargo. Um, I, these are going to have to go in as, honestly, it's kind of funny, average performance because they are doing their job. And what more can you ask for? They go and they pick up and they transport cargo from point A to point B. <laughs> it's a vehicle in the book. You gotta love it. So there we are. Average performance, first vehicle, utility vehicles. Oh! We did, this, we did I completely skipped the ranking system. It's the same one I used in the previous uh, vehicles ranking. So if you want to check out that video, there'll be a card up in the corner. And you can see how I did the rankings there. It's the exact same one. Supreme average, above average. Or sorry. Supreme performance, above average performance, average performance, below average performance, and needs help performing. That's our vehicle categories for the day. We are not changing them from the last time. So let's just keep rolling out with the different vehicles. Next up, we have the Mantis Light Attack VTOL. Intersphere. So these first 11 or 12 or whatever are all intersphere vehicles. The rest of those following afterwards are clan vehicles. This right here is a little 15 ton VTOL that on the base version it was 1117, so very speedy. It's got light armor, but all VTOLs have light armor. This thing can weather a, a PPC shot to the front though, not much more. And it carries five ER small lasers. You know, that's not even all that bad. The thing, the thing, the great thing about this thing is there's a later version called the ECCM, which has a C3 slave system and two ECM systems on a mast mount, so it can hide behind the woods and still be doing its job. And I gotta say, that is amazing. That's an amazing vehicle. Uh, all of these Mantis versions, the two Mantis versions I know of, are both fantastic, um, above average performers. I'm almost tempted to say it's the supreme performance, but they're just going to be above average. They're good, they're, they're good though. Hey, next up, the Heavy Armored Personnel Carrier, or the Heavy APCs. This book has three of them at the same time. Because you have the Heavy Hover APC, the Heavy Tracked APC, and the Heavy Wheeled APC. They all carry the same amount of infantry and the same two machine guns with half a ton of ammo each. The difference is in the how fast they go. The hover moves at 812, the tracked moves at 58, and the wheeled moves at 69. That's the differences. Of course it also limits the train they can maneuver, 
wheeled cannot go through uh, difficultly passable terrain into forests and so forth and so on. Tracked vehicles can cover more gra uh, all kinds of surfaces, and the hover vehicles tend to side slip and they can go over water. So different uh, vehicles for different needs. They all do their job with uh, perfectly average and adequate aplomb. So again, the heavy APC, all three of them are perfectly average performance because they do what they need to do. They can carry six tons of infantry, which is actually pretty good. And they can take it to battle. And that's what they're there for. Next up, we have the Hawk Moth Gunship. This is the lighter cousin to the Yellow Jacket Gunship. Huh, Hawk Moth. Anyways, uh, this, unlike the Yellow Jacket, this one carries a light Gauss rifle. Because the Yellow Jacket does carry the full size Gauss rifle. This one is able to hang in to a longer campaign because it carries 32 rounds of ammo, which I think is a touch excessive for the average Battletech game, but is just fine if you're playing a longer term scenario campaign, which may require different kinds of, like, you know, reloading and handling of uh, that kind of stuff. So, it's pretty darn good. It is very lightly armored, though. It's got a speed of 812, but the fact that it's armor, no, no location on this thing can handle a PPC shot without going internal. So it's a bit weak right there. I think that when you compare this thing to the Yellow Jacket, which is, the Yellow Jacket is slower, but the Yellow Jacket is also carrying a full-size Gauss rifle. The light Gauss rifle is just, you lose quite a bit for a little bit of tonnage and more range. Just never liked it quite as much as the full-size Gauss rifle. Or as much as a heavy Gauss rifle. Still, I'm going to say that this thing as a qualified sniper is an above average bit of performance. It is a sniper. Next up, we have the Pinto Attack VTOL. The base rate moves a respectable 1015 with enough armor to withstand a Gauss rifle from most everywhere but the rear. So pretty darn good. It carries three medium lasers and LRM-5. That has Artemis 4. That's that that's a weird decision. And a Beagle Active Probe. It also carries one ton of infantry. Eh. I in this case, oh, I like infantry. I in this case would have swapped out that Artemis 4 and the infantry to upgrade the 5 rack. Eh. Maybe. And the Beagle Active Probe. Drop the Beagle Active Probe, the Artemis, and the infantry to upgrade the 5 rack to a 10 rack for more offensive output. And maybe if you can fit it on there, slap in half a ton more armor. Or if you can't, jigger around with the equipment and put in, put in something else. Two ER smalls in place of one medium, and slap in a heat sink in place as well, because I think that should cover the heat differential. Something. The one ton of infantry is not super, super useful. And Artemis IV on a LRM-5 rack is the difference between an average of three points of damage and an average of four points of damage. Uh, doesn't seem worth a ton to me. I don't really see the point of putting Artemis 4 usually on any of the missile racks under a uh, 15 rack. 15s and 20s definitely get a big benefit out of it. With the 10s and the 5s, I don't think the tonnage cost is worth the uh, worth the extra like point or two of damage. Anyways, the Pinto is, because of the, the, the failings in some ways and the weirdness of that overall, it's still an above average vehicle because it does carry three medium lasers and move at 1015, which means it is a threat, even though some of the other parts of it are kind of wibbly. And it does have a big electro probe, which can be useful in certain situations. As an attack VTOL, it still can attack pretty effectively, though. Next up, the Chevalier Light Tank. I love the name on that tank. The little 35 ton uh, wheeled tank, the kind of an odd thing there, as being a wheeled. Uh, but it moves at 6'9", which is nice. It mounts an ER large laser in a turret, and two Streak SRM-2s on the front. And it's not bad. The it, Again, this falls into the role as a sniper, but by being wheeled, it can't maneuver into quite as many areas as, say, a tracked vehicle could. So it's kind of more limitation on a sniper. But it can also do city fighting relatively effectively because it does have the Streak SRM-2s, even with the ER large laser being... Very wasteful. 
I, I hate to say it, but I kind of think that this thing more or less falls into the average performance category, even though I really like the name. Kind of hope this one gets re or gets a new sculpt and design for it in the upcoming uh, Mercenaries Kickstarter that will be arriving this fall. The Gladius Medium Tank is our next vehicle. This is a hovercraft that weighs 40 tons and moves at 812. It mounts pretty hefty armor for its weight class, able to take a Gauss rifle shot in all directions and two of them in the front before even going internal. What is the map for weaponry? A single basic run-of-the-mill AC-10 with two tons of ammo. Seems a touch weird to me. I mean, at that speed, you know, the Saladin's mounting an AC-20. It's kind of in some ways a nice pairing with a Saladin because it gives it more range, but it does have a major down uh, uh, downside. This is not a turreted vehicle, which means the AC-10 is only stuck in the front forward arc, which means you've got to, you know, if you're moving this thing very fast, you are running risks of side slipping if you're turning. So definitely a downside. I kind of think this one is a little bit of a below average performer just because it seems like it doesn't, it doesn't do as good a job as a Saladin and it's kind of filling the same role and the Saladin is going to be a better tank. So it's just, it's a bit below average. The light SRM carrier. This thing is a wheeled vehicle with uh, weighing 40 tons, moves at 4.6, so it's got adequate speed. I mean, could be better. It's got light armor, not terrifyingly light, but light. And it mounts five SRM-6s, so like I think that's half the number the normal SRM carrier carries. And it has three tons of ammo. That's not bad at all. So we're looking at like a vehicle that's on average going to fight nine rounds, but it's not going to survive nine rounds. Not with its lightweight armor. So honestly, it could have it could have even gone with a ton less armor or a ton less uh, ammo to put another ton of armor on this thing. Because even if it only can fire for like six rounds then or whatever, it's gonna, that's going to be its lifespan anyways. This is not a vehicle that's going to last long on the battlefield. I, I see this as something a bunch of infantry go and park behind like a, uh, a tank barricade, fire until they're hit, and then run away as it explodes. It's, uh... I don't know how to feel about this tank. It's, it's such a weird one, because the SRM carrier is so horrifyingly destructive. And this thing is half an SRM carrier, so it's pretty horrifyingly destructive and again it's cheap I mean these things these wheeled ice vehicle ice engine vehicles are super cheap if you're running C bills they're low in battle value they are just like if you're playing with these they are an easy way to fill in lots of slots in a force organization so I'm gonna say this thing's gonna qualify as average performance even though I'm really tempted to throw it into below average because it doesn't have the armor to survive next up the Myrmidon medium tank. This is a uh, tracked 40 tonner, so it weighs the same thing as the other, uh, the prior vehicle, with twice as much armor, so it's got some durable armor. I mean, this thing can take, can weather a pretty hefty amount of fire from any direction before it's going to go internal. And it mounts only two simple weapons, a turret-mounted SRM-6 and a turret-mounted PPC, making it a very solid battlefield tank. Again, and it's going to be cheap and, and low battle value. I mean, this thing is easy to fill in slots with because it's just there. And it's versatile. Get too close, the SRM-6 kicks in. Kick, uh, keep far away, and it's sniping you with a PPC. So, as a tank, I really want to call this a mainline battle tank, but it's more like a support, or like a, a reserve tank or a sniping tank. I think this is going to qualify as above average performance for its weight. It's really solid. Next up. We have the heavy LRM carrier, because when three LRM-20s are not enough, try putting four in a tank. The other difference is the basic LRM carrier is not turreted, and the heavy LRM carrier does have a turret. So, yay. This thing also weighs in at 80 tons. I mean, we just skipped from 40 tons in this book to 80 tons, so we know we're kind of like jumping real heavy, real fast. This is an 80-ton tracked vehicle with four LRM-20 racks on it, 
a movement speed of 2, 3, because it, it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't need to go anywhere. This kind of thing you move into position and let sit as it's doing its damage. And that's, that's what it is. It's also got extremely low armor. It only carries 4 tons of armor on this thing. So, a couple shots from any direction and it's going to explode. But again, it's an LRM, heavy LRM carrier. It should not be at the forefront of a battlefield. This thing should be sitting back and lobbing loads of LRMs downrange. Oh, and it does have loads of LRMs. It has 8 tons of ammo. 48 rounds of LRM-20 ammo. Which, when there's 4 launchers, is 12 rounds per rack. Which is exactly what I consider to be battlefield standard. So, uh, hooray for this awesome little Magistry of Canopus designed heavy LRM carrier. Next up, we have an Inner Sphere Omni Tank. Ooh. This thing is called the Shiltron. It weighs in at 80 tons. It moves 3.5 with a 220XL fusion engine, so it's not going to be a cheap tank. It's a quite expensive tank. Its armor factor is only 10 tons of ferrofibrous armor. 179 points is what it has. I mean, that's not bad looking, but that is feels light for an 80 tonner that's literally going to be getting into battle. Well, no, sorry, this is not a battlefield tank. This is actually really heavily armored for what its role is. This is an artillery tank. It's got four vari variants in here. The primary variant mounts two Aero 4 systems. Artillery. And it has two medium lasers and four small lasers as well. Point blank defense guns. Because those are in a turret, which is perfect. Alt Config A mounts two MRM-40 racks and two MRM-10 racks with that same bank of two mediums and four small lasers. Alt Config B mounts four LRM-15s with Artemis IV FCS. I approve of it there. But only has half the lasers, one medium and two smalls. Alt Config C is the strangest one in my opinion. Because all can think C is more of a laser sniper or laser brawler tank, mounting only four inner sphere basic plain large lasers and all the heat sinks it needs to cover that. The all can think C is also the lowest battle value version, which makes sense since it has to have the most point blankiness. And it also has less firepower because it mounts 22 tons of heat sinks. Which is a lot, because it needs 32 points of heat sinks, and since it has the XL Fusion Engine, it, even being a tank, it does get those 10 free heat sinks. Still, that's 22 tons of an 80-ton vehicle. Nearly, more than a quarter of its weight dedicated to heat dissipation. It's an interesting tank, and I'm realizing that as I'm talking about it, its picture did not load into my tear maker. So, the poor Shiltron is not going to be in the pictures. Just take my, word, take my word for it that I'm going to say the Shiltron is an above average performance artillery tank and a below average performance brawler tank. So I guess it's good it doesn't have a picture, I need to take it in two places. I also just realized I hadn't put the heavy LRM carrier anywhere and it goes in above average performance because that's four LRM 20 racks rolling down, raining down, raining down, upon your enemy. And who can say no to that? Well, the guy on the other side going, no! He can say no. But you can't say no. Lastly, amongst the industry vehicles, is the Demolisher 2 heavy tank. This is one of those weird ones, in my opinion, that almost really that doesn't need a separate entry. This should have just been a variant of the Demolisher heavy tank. It weighs 100 tons. Moves at 3.5 with a fusion engine. It's tracked. It has Big Bore Auto Cans as his main gun. One Ultra AC 20 with four tons of ammo. One LB 20 with four tons of ammo. And two machine guns. Again, it's really just a demolisher with upgraded cannons. I don't know why this isn't just a demolisher variant instead of calling it the Demolisher 2. It's not deserving of the Demolisher 2 
Nick, our name, it, it's a diversion deserving of a demolisher variant. So, I mean, it is for a mainline battle tank that's slow as a demolisher with big broiler cans. It is exactly what you get out of the tin. I mean, this is an average performance because it is like the demolisher. Oh, it also has like a crap ton of armor. 260 points of armor, which is good. But it's still, it's a mainline battle tank, mainline brawler, doing a very average job. It is scary on the battlefield. I'm not going to say it's not scary. This thing, bringing those AC-20 to the battlefield is, is very frightening. Still, it is just average because it's a demolisher. Doing what a demolisher does. Next, we'll be moving into the clan vehicles. One of the interesting things with the clan vehicles we're going to be discussing is the fact that all the clan vehicles are named after a mythological being. Mostly gods and goddesses, but in a few cases, deities and other things. So, yay! I'll be giving a brief history blurb, or mythology blurb, I guess, on each of these vehicles just because it's kind of fun. I mean, I personally didn't know a couple of these until I decided to go read about them. So... Maybe it'll help you become more enlightened on the weird names behind all these vehicles. So, the first one up is the Shamish Reconnaissance Vehicle. It's a 11-ton, according to this book, an 11-ton clan hover tank. I've actually never used it, so I honestly don't know if it actually is 11 tons. I mean, it says 11 tons. I'm going to bet that if I do the math on this thing and look down, it weighs 10 tons. Na -na -na. Nine. No, it weighs 11. It does weigh 11 tons, by the math on the book. That's strange. That, that, that's really strange. Because the engine is a 60 rated engine, and that's not... That's not... Oh, I don't know. I don't know where this one comes from. Okay, it's a 1320 speed vehicle. A hover, va hover tank. With a very light armor. I mean, like a basic industrial PPC punctures through every single side of this thing and it mounts four ER small lasers and no no tech that says it's a reconnaissance there's no big active probe there's no active probe on this thing there's nothing that says it's a reconnaissance vehicle it's not a reconnaissance vehicle its name is reconnaissance vehicle but it's really a light a light harasser so you know what I have to rate this tank as below average Oh, and since so I'm going to say what the gods are in these things, uh, Shamash, or Shamash, I'm 100% I'm not, I'm not certain how to pronounce that name, is an Akkadian sun god, also known as Utu, literally the sun, uh, sometimes associated with the underworld, divination, and paired as a weather god along with the god Adad. There you go, Akkadian. Interesting. Next up, we have the Ashur Artillery Spotter. Let me look and see if it contains the one important piece of equipment that says, I am an artillery spotter. Yes, it has tag. It is an artillery spotter. It is already not going to be below average. It's a little 20-tonner, 914, another hover tank. Uh, more armor than the last one, which, I mean, it should have. It weighs 9 tons more. That's just a weird thing to say. Uh, but not great armor still. And it has a decent set of weapons for its weight class. Two-year mediums and a streak SRM-6. But then it has the all-important tag. So, this is a very averagely performing artillery spotter. And that's really where I think it belongs, is average performance. Because we have to, you know, think of clan still being clan. I mean, while it's got good, very good guns on there, its main job is spotting for artillery. And if you have your drivers getting bogged down in the idea, in the idea of actually engaging in real combat instead of spotting for your all-important artillery... It's not really doing its job, so I'm just going to give this thing as an average performance. It would have actually been better, in my opinion, as an artillery spotter, had it had better armor, probably an ECM suite to go along with the tag to electronically keep itself cloaked, and then, like, maybe more speed. I think it would be better reconnaissance vehicle in that case. As it stands, it's an average reconnaissance vehicle because it has too much temptation for the pilots to decide to get into combat. So, oh. again, I promise we do a little bit of thing on the gods. Asher is the deified form of the city, Asher, the capital of the old Assyrian kingdom. 
Like I said, not really a god. Doesn't fall in the category of gods. This is a deified city. That's it. That is also interesting. Next up, we have the Odin Scout take. And if you don't know who Odin is in mythology, then I'm, I'm wondering about you a little bit. Odin, a.k.a. Woden, Norse god of healing, wisdom, death, royalty, knowledge, war, battle, yada, yada, yada. I mean, seriously, the list that goes on and on and on, it seems like, I mean, Odin, big Norse mythology dude, of course. So, this is a little scout tank. Let's look and see if it has the at least the minimum piece of equipment I consider definitely necessary for a scout tank. Yes, it contains an active probe. I'm happy now. It is a scout tank. But unfortunately, it's a weird scout tank because it's wheeled, which means it's more limited in where it can drive. It also, again, falls in the trap that the clans seem to have of putting on more guns than you need on a scout or an artillery spotter because this thing carries two medium pulse lasers, a street gas from two, and an ER small laser. I mean, that's a good amount of guns. A lot of guns, actually, on a scout. I'm not super thrilled with that. I'd rather really have more speed than what it has. Also, this thing's armor is terrifyingly low. I mean, it can only withstand a clan ER medium laser hitting the front. In the other location, it's going internal. And it's only an 812 speed, so it's not fast enough, in my opinion, to justify that kind of armor. This is, even though, this is, even though it has a big electric probe as a scout, because it is both wheeled and abysmally terribly low armor with inadequate speed, it's, it's a below average scout. I was really tempted to stick it into needs, perform, needs help performing, but it has at least an active probe, so I can't stick it there. At least it can scout. Next up, we have the Donar Assault Helicopter. If you did not know, Donar is the old high German pronunciation of Thor. The Norse god of lightning, thunder, storms, strength, sacred groves of trees, fertility. The name Thur the, the, the god that Thursday is named after. So, yay. But let's look at the Donar. The Donar is a sniper helicopter that literally lives up to its name. It brings lightning from the skies. Well, it would have mounted a PPC or an ER PPC. As it is, it mounts an ER large laser and two Street Castle M2s. Which means it did have the tonnage to mount an ER PPC, except for it's missing the heat sinks. Even with the fusion engine, it wouldn't have had the heat sinks to cover an ER PPC from the clans. It moves at 914, so reasonable-ish enough speed, because it's a VTOL. And thankfully, it has enough armor to weather most or some guns hitting it at least once in every location. The front can withstand a Gauss rifle. No place else can on it. So it has that. It also kind of looks like a kind of a weird bee or hornet kind of thing, which is kind of cool. Overall, as a sniper, this thing definitely has is an above average performer because it's got the clan ER large laser, keeps itself a distance, and snipes very well. Next up. We have the Mithras light tank. Mithras is from the Zoroastrian divinity Mithra, but it really is more of a later Roman mystery cult. Popular among the Imperial Roman legions from the 1st to 4th century CE. Kind of a weird choice in this place to name for like one of these vehicles. Uh, it's not really, uh, it's a bit weird compared to like, you know, the god of thunder or the god of war. Then again, I guess so was naming after a city was interesting, so uh, whatever. Um, the Mises light tank is a 25-ton tracked clan tank that moves at 6'9", so at least it's okay there. It's pretty light in the armor, only 67 points of ferrofibrous armor. Uh, so it can handle some shots, but it's still, you know, it's relatively weak in a lot of... It, it, two hits him by anything big in any location is going to go through, more or less. And what does this thing mount? Well... It, 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 it embarrassingly mounts an Ultra AC-2 and two ER medium lasers. Two ER medium lasers are A-OK. -okay. That's just fine. It has a fusion engine. It's not paying any heat sink tax on those. But it has an Ultra AC-2. Why would you ever bother putting that in a tank? For the tonnage of an Ultra AC-2 on this thing, 
it could have mounted an LRM-20 or an LRM-15 with more than adequate ammo. Especially under clan weights for LRM launchers. So being an Ultra AC-2 is just god-awful. This is a... It's not a sniping tank because an Ultra AC-2 is not a sniper. It's not anti-air as far as I'm concerned because an Ultra AC-2 is still a piece of garbage against anything in the sky. It is bad. It looks like it should be a combat tank with the ult with the ER mediums, but it has the Ultra AC-2, so it's just bad. Like I said, there are many clan tanks I think are not great designs, and we already have 75% of the below average performance are clan vehicles. Next up, the Anhur Transport. Anhur, the Egyptian god of war, on a cargo VTOL. I mean, seriously? Why not switch Mithras and Anhur's name? It what, whatever, whatever. Uh, the funny thing is, though, this this cargo, this transport, is actually a better combat thing than the than the Mithras. It mounts an ER medium laser and two medium pulse lasers and carries seven tons of cargo, which is like a full point of clan elementals, which is great. So yay, happy times. It's also got an eight twelve speed. Uh, it's got less armor than the Mithras, but it's a VTOL, so it's going faster anyways and doing stuff and better guns. And I mean, honestly, because it can carry that full point of elementals, it's got good weaponry. This is an above average vehicle. It's doing a really solid job. And, and yeah, go it. Go, go Egyptian God of War. Next up, the Indra Infantry Transport, which when you look at the picture, my first thought whenever I'm thinking of an infantry transport to come to the battlefield is, Always bring the bindi bus. Why does it look like that? And why would you put your put? Why would you put four machine guns in the turret and the RPPC in the front? Thankfully, it can carry three tons of cargo, so it can carry an infantry platoon. It moves at five eight. It's wheeled, so again, it's got limitations on where it can drive. It's got. 96 points of armor, which is actually pretty darn good for weighing only 35 tons. I mean, compared to the Onhor, though, I have to rate this thing as only average. It's interesting. Oh, oh and um, Indra's the Vedic deity of Hinduism associated with the sky, thunder, storms, rains, river, war. Um, yeah, I don't know much about that one, unfortunately. Sorry. That's kind of the briefest overview I can give on that. I did know some of these pretty well, and I had to go look up other ones and go, oh, that's what that one is. Next up, we have the Svantovit, I hope I pronounced that right, Infantry Fighting Vehicle. So this is a vehicle that fights infantry. Let's look down and see if it can fight infantry. Yes, it has two machine guns. That's good enough to fight infantry. It also mounts two LRM-5s and two Streak SRM-2s. And it mounts five tons of cargo, so it can carry its own elemental point as well. Yay! It's a 35-ton hover tank from the clans. Moves at 10-15, so good speed. Its armor is once again embarrassingly light, but not horrifying. I mean, like, it's light. It's bad light. But not makes me, but not in a, in a, it makes me want to cry like because it moves 10 15. So, yeah. Um, I think it's going to go into the. And its job for killing infantry and bringing other infantry to kill more infantry means the Svantovit, the Slavic god of abundance and war, actually is going to get an above average performance. So, good for it. Next up, the Zoria light tank. Zoria, in Slavic folklore, is a feminine personification of Dawn. Sometimes called the Red Maiden. She's kind of maybe related, you know, kind of like syncretically, you can like say she's close to like the Roman goddess Aurora. So, not really even a god in this case, or goddess, it's a personification of Dawn. A yet another 35-ton clanner. Tracked this time. So it moves at 4 6 because if you haven't been taking VTOL is the fastest generally. 
for the weight of the engine, then hover, then wield, then tracked. Uh, it's got low armor again. A lot of these clan vehicles have low armor because I guess the clan, you know, the clans are disrespectful of vehicles, and so they don't really bother armoring the armoring their vehicles all that heavily either. And so a lot of these clan vehicles are low armored. This is another one of those tanks that makes me just go, "Why do you exist?" The good thing this thing has is an ECM suite. Then this thing mounts an LR an LB five X and LRM-10 with Artemis IV. It is an ICE engine, so the engine's heavy, which is why it mounts no energy weapons, because then you have to pay the heat sink tax. It's kind of like a miserably awful sniper, and it really is, and even for other snipers we've seen, I mean, this thing doesn't have the punch of a Gauss rifle, or even of a light Gauss rifle, it's barely hurt. It, it, it is a below average performing sniper. I mean, I suppose, in anti-air roll with the LB-5, it's it's okay, but <sighs> no, not not a big fan of it. I like the way the big, I like the picture, and I like the uh, miniature. Honestly, just it it falls down in actual performance. Next up, the Ares medium tank. If you don't know, Ares is the Greek god of war, bloodlust, courage, etc., etc., etc. He's he encompasses the ideals of both. Or the, both the ideals of physical valor and also the negative side of the brutality and bloodlust of like the like of a warrior or whatever. So yeah, Ares. And this tank is actually our first forty tonner. Yay, our medium tank. It uh, it's got better armor than a lot of things we've been talking about, but still kind of low armor. Uh, I mean, at least it can weather a Gauss rifle shell in every direction, which is good. Uh, it's got a 200 rated fusion engine so it moves 5.8 which is pretty good and it mounts uh, an ER large laser which in clans I, is not a bad weapon unlike the Sphere version which it kind of is because the clan one reaches out to 25 hexes and goes tickle tickle tickle. Dangerous. Then aside, alongside that it has an LRM-10 with an Artemis 4 and an LRM-15 with Artemis 4. Not bad. I mean the, Ar the Artemis 4 on the 10 rack is a little bit... Wibbly dibbly, but I'm okay with it in this instance. This is probably one of the better clan. I'd say this is a clan. This is a clan sniper tank that actually is a good clan sniper tank because it just fires the air large laser and the LRMs at very long distances and doesn't try to actually deal with anybody up close. It also kind of looks interesting, but I mean, a lot of exposed track. I'm not sure why you never like you know have those big old Ford tracks rolling towards the enemy because those say pop me so I can't drive no more, even though. In the game rules, it doesn't work like that very often. You have to go down the, the sides. But still, not a bad-looking vehicle overall, and a competent sniper for the clans. Yes, competent. Ah, uh, next up is the Epona Pursuit Tank. Epona is the Gallo-Roman protector of horses, ponies, and the like. The donkeys and so forth. Um, uh, a goddess of fertility, a, pat a patron of the of cavalry. Or, uh, so... Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a hover tank that goes fast. It, sure, why not? It's an Omni tank also. Let, let's pretend it's a protector of horses. <laughs> so let's look at this thing's loadout. It's a 914 hover tank that weighs 50 tons. So it's, a, it's, you know, it's a good heavy medium. I think it's the heaviest hover tank can get. It moves at 914 with a fusion engine, so not bad. Only 96 points of armor, but it's a tank, so it can handle a Gauss rifle shell from any direction before it goes internal. And it's got the Omni variants. So it's got the first one is four medium pulse lasers, a street gas serum four. Okay, that's good. With that speed and those pulses, this thing can actually do a pretty good amount of damage. It actually really is now seeming like a cavalry unit. Alt config A is kind of crazy, mounting two LRM 20s. Two ER mediums and a tag. Twelve rounds of ammo per each uh, LRM-20. This thing is a long-range barrage tank, which is really kind of weird on a 914 body. All config B is Ultra AC-10 paired up with two Street Gas Room 4s and plenty of ammo to go around on that thing. And is not bad. I mean, I, I don't mind it. I don't think it's nearly as good as the one with the four medium pulses 
mainly because clan meat, clan pulse slicers are disgustingly overpowered. And then there's Alt Config C, which has got an ERPPC, a Street Gas Serum 6, an ECM Suite, and a tag. So the, the C variant is our Electronics Marvel. The A variant has a tag to go alongside the LRM 20s, so it's a bit of a cross purposes, in my opinion, right there. So, overall, though, I want to think this thing is mainly a cavalry tank designed for flanking. Designed for rapid assaults, and it does the dang job. In fact, I think this might be the very first thing I'm going to rate in supreme performance. And I will admit, a portion of that comes from the fact that the primary variant mounts four clan medium pulse lasers, which go to 12 hexes at minus two for pulse weaponry meaning it's disgustingly good at hitting with those guns. Even for clan tank crews, at least it should be able to hit. Next up, the Hachiman Fire Support Tank. Name literally means eight banners in Japanese. Uh, and these are Japanese kami of war, archery, and samurai, uh, as well as agriculture and fishing. A, a bit of touch weird. Uh, I... It's Japanese kami because it's really not either Shinto or Buddhist. It's kind of like a, a convergence of the two in some ways. So really Japanese, not other religion. And um, it is actually the deification of Ojin, the 15th emperor of Japan, like uh, in like the 700s, I think it is. Uh, don't quote me on that one. I, I'd have to go and do some more research on that. Um, He's also the patron deity of the Minamoto clan. So, but there's, a lot, there's a lot more on this one than the last one. I know, a lot, I know at least a, a good overview on this one a bit better than I do some of those because it's Japanese mythology and Japanese history. So you got a bit more of an interest there. Still, it's a pretty complex one because it, it has relations to an actual living person. And then it's got the deification aspects and the changes that happen there and how it meshes between the religions. So, honestly, it's kind of an interesting one. If you were to look at that up, it's, it's kind of interesting. Still, let's look at this tank. <laughs> I know, I went on a bit right there. This is a 50-ton tracked clan tank. It only moves 4.6, which is just fine. It's the heavily, he, most heavily armored clan tank we've seen so far at 134 points, or 7 tons. So, for most directions, it can handle... The front, uh, the front can handle two Gauss rifles hitting it before it goes internal. And most everywhere else can handle a Gauss rifle plus something else before it goes internal. So it's actually got pretty decent protection. And at the same time, it is also a really solid, solid support tank for like what it does. I mean, this is an artillery support tank. Well, not artillery, but it's an LRM support tank. It's got double LRM-20s with 24 rounds. And each of the 20 racks has an Artemis IV attached to it, so... They go from like being a 12 average damage weapon to like a 16 average damage weapon, so they're, that's pretty darn good. Uh, it also has a Street Caster M4, and yeah, I mean, that's just a solid range tank. It doesn't need to be any close to the battle at all, and it's just going to lob LRMs downfield until it's all done. The design is a little bit weird looking, I mean, image-wise, because it's got those really huge triangular tracks, but still not, not bad at all. Um, where do I want to rank this sucker? I think that this thing is going to qualify as above average performance. Just really kind of cool. It's the same place the heavy arm carrier went, so it's kind of got the same kind of like gist to it. Next up, the Ku Wheeled Assault Tank. Ku is the Hawaiian god of strength, war, and healing. The actual name, I do believe, is Ku Ka Ili Moku. Ku Ka Ili Moku. It's actually four words, and I, my understanding is that actually means like, um, like it, uh, something like the, the taker of land or something like that. I don't again, don't quote me on that one hundred percent. I I've run across this one, but didn't know a lot about it. Um, uh, one, he's one of the four great Hawaiian deities, I do believe, alongside Kanaloa, uh, Kane, and Lono, I think. Um, and I kind of, I remember running into them when I actually went to, Hawaii, went to Hawaii. I went, like, running into something, some stuff about them. But I don't know enough about them. I haven't really studied the Hawaiian 
the native Hawaiian religion. So, if this is the religion, or if it's just mythology, I don't even know that much. So that's you know talking about something right there. Still, Ku or Ku Ka Ili Moku is a Hawaiian god of strength and war and healing, the god of the north and that kind of stuff. So kind of cool. Actually, a pretty cool name on this one. I actually kind of wish they called it the Ku Ka Ili Moku instead of just calling it the Ku Wield Assault Tank. Steel, it's a 50-tonner for the clan. Wield moves at 4.6 with the fusion engine. It's got pretty decent armor again. I mean, for, for a clanner of this weight class. And uh, mounts some pretty... For once, you're going to get to a tank. I'm actually going to be pretty solidly happy with just the solid, the simple loadout it's got. It's got an ER large laser, an ER small laser, an Ultra AC-10 with 20 rounds of ammo, and a Street Gusser M4. I don't have an objection to this thing. Especially since all the bigger guns, except for the Street 4, are mounted in the turret, so go to town. This is a good tank. If a, The biggest downside is it's wheeled, and this is an assault tank, and it's a touch slow even though it's wheeled. So I'm only going to say this is an average performing tank. It could have been better. But not by a huge amount. Next up is the Oro heavy tank. Oro is the Tahitian god of war. And that is literally all I know about that subject. Sorry. Still, this tank, though, is disgustingly good, in my opinion. Well, no, it's not. I wanted to say that because it's got a big bore auto cannon and a clan large pulse laser, which out of the clans are both really solid guns. But the problem is, it's a tracks tank. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. It only moves at 4.6 and it carries less armor than the Ku. And less armor than the Hachiman. But this one, because it's got the LB-20, needs to be getting up to close range, or closer range, so it's not served very well by the lower armor. And the other thing that drags it down is it only mounts 10 rounds of ammo for the LB-20X. So, I really wanted to say it was going to be an awesome one, but I fooled you. Fooled myself for a second, too. It's actually a below average performance vehicle. Just because it should be an assault tank, or it's a heavy tank, it, the armor is not worthy of a heavy tank. It's way too light, way too easy to punch through on this thing. Next up, the Ishtar Heavy Fire Support Tank. Ishtar is the Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian goddess of love, war, beauty, sex, justice, and politics, known as the Queen of Heaven. So, yeah, go to town. Let's see if this thing lives up to that kind of name. I mean, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm not, I'm not thinking when I'm looking at this tank, like, sexy in any way, shape, or form, or beauty. I'm thinking penny-farthing weird. Still, what's this thing got? It's a 65-tonner. It's a 3.5 wheel vehicle, so wow. Wheel vehicle, that's 3.5. That thing is going slow. It's only got 144 points of armor, so it's not terrible. I mean, it can weather, a gauss, weather two gauss rifle shells on most locations. But what does it have for weapons? Well, it's got two-year medium lasers. Okay, that's fine for clans. It's got an AMS with way too much ammo. It's got two tons of AMS ammo. And clan AMS ammo is twice the number of shots per ton than an inner sphere AMS carries. So this thing has got 48 shots per ton of AMS ammo. Has an LB-10X with 20 rounds of ammo. An AC-10, an Ultra AC-10 with 20 rounds of ammo. And an LRM-15 with 16 rounds of ammo. It's weirdly loaded out. It's very good on the guns, but even though they're eclectically bizarre, and I kind of wish, you know, it had, like, two LBXs or two L Ultra 10s or something like that. I, I don't really know. To give it more of a concentrated fire shot. I mean, touch weird. And it's... It's ugly. It really is ugly. I mean, it's not penny for me, penny farthing kitsch. Kind of like, Ugh. No, this thing's just ugly. Uh, and it's a heavy fire support tank. It, it is a heavy fire support tank. I will give it that. This is a very averagely performing heavy fire support tank. I can't say it's anything other than that. Next up, we have the Athena Combat Vehicle. Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, handicraft, and warfare, you know, also portrayed by Angelina Jolie in The Eternals as Athena. 
still, it works for this tank. And trust me, that name works for this tank. Because you kind of think of Athena as sort of like, I, I, I mean, like being like tactically smart and stuff like that, you know, wisdom. So this thing mounts two Gauss rifles. Yay! It's the best tank we've seen so far in the whole dang book. Because it mounts two of the simplest, most direct, most damaging guns in the game. It also has an LRM-10, uh, two year medium lasers and two machine guns. Oh, and then the cherry on top of the dang Gauss rifle to display the wisdom of Athena, it has a targeting computer. This 75 ton tank is a little bit light in the armor, and it's a little bit slow, but it's tracked so it can go anywhere it needs to, for the most part, and it carries two Gauss rifles. Yeah, this is going to be our second Supreme Performance Vehicle. It's good. It's really, really good. Because of a targeting computer with Gauss rifles. Now, the limitation is the Gauss rifles are fixed forward front. Doesn't matter. Target computer can overcome that movement to walk to turn a hex side if you need to. So, there we go. Only oh, the LRM-10 is in the exact same place as the Gauss rifles, so it just flies down range, hoping to find the holes the Gauss made. Next up is the, the Huey, because it's easier to say than Huitzi Lupochtli. <laughs> the Aztec deity of, uh, deity of war, sun, and human sacrifice, the patron deity of Tenochtitlan. So, that's pretty cool. I, I think that's actually really cool. Uh, this is an assault tank, and I disagree with that name. This is an artillery tank. This thing is not assaulting anyone. This thing is sitting back and lobbing Artemis, sorry, Arrow 4 shells. It has two Arrow 4 systems. Makes it a permit pairing for any of those prior vehicles that had tag. It's a 85 ton tracked internal combustion engine tank, so boy, that engine's not super efficient in this thing. Moves only two, three. But it's an artillery tank. That can be forgiven. It has almost no armor at all in this thing. Again, it's an artillery tank. That can be forgiven. What is harder to forgive is the wasteful weapons on this thing. It has two medium pulse lasers. That's fine for self that's fine for to protection. It has an ER small laser. Again, that's fine for protection. It's got some machine guns, good, that's ward off the infantry. It's got the two Arrow 4s. That's what it's here for. But why, oh why, did it waste 9 tons on an Ultra AC-5 with 2 tons of ammo? That gun doesn't need to be on here. That, that weapon should have been left off in the place of additional armor. Because that would help it protect more than the Ultra AC-5 ever would. Or build in a tag system so the thing can tag for itself if it needs to. Or any number of other things. Thankfully, it does have an ECM suite, so it gives us some electronics protection for those valuable pieces of artillery. Still, I can only rate this thing as average because of the giant waste of nearly 10% or for more than 10% of its weight in a gun that doesn't need to be on this kind of tank. I mean, even if they additionally added LRMs in the place of the Ultra AC-5, it'd have been worth a lot more, in my opinion. The Ultra AC-5 is just such a strange gun to be sticking in an artillery tank. Because honestly, you kind of want the artillery tank to be hiding from the line of sight. And Ultra 5 is all about LOS. I mean, rip it out, slap in another medium pulse laser and a couple of extra heat sinks, and you'd still have more tonnage for armor. Even though it's six out of the nine tons, you still would have had three tons of armor. That's that's fine. You could have done that, but you should have done that. And that's an average artillery tank because it's pulled down by a pile of garbage stuck on it for no good reason. Well, I'm not saying Ultra AC-5s are garbage. I'm just saying in this case, it's a piece of garbage. And last up, the Clan 100-ton assault vehicle, the Mars. The Roman god of war and agriculture, also syncretic with... The Greek god Ares, so we kind of got Ares twice in here. Just, you know, this one's a big, beefy god of war. It's another 100-ton, it's, it's, it's our first 100-ton 
It's another tracked clan tank with a fusion engine, thankfully. But again, this thing only moves at two, three. This is a slow rolling gigantic slab of steel with thankfully good amount of armor. 220 points of armor, or 11 and a half tons, with 50 on the front, so boom, that's a tough slab of armor to cut through. And what does this monstrosity bear for weapons? Well, it starts off by bearing in the turret an ER large laser and a Gauss rifle for shooting things at very long ranges, which is good because it's never going to get up to the front line of battle. It also has two machine guns on the turret for anti-infantry purposes, which is just fine because of the thing's speed. It's really not getting away from infantry either. Then it has an LB-10X in the front. That's a bit strange in my opinion to mount that in the front. But it also then mounts three LRM-15s with Artemis IV also in the front, even though in the picture they're in the back, but they fire frontwards. Then... As added protection from, I guess, things flanking it, it has a streak six rack on each side. And thank goodness for this thing's purposes, it also has an ECM suite. But wow, is that a violent, violent, sla uh, slow moving slab of steel. This is an above, I'm not going to say that this thing is supreme performance because it's listed as an assault tank. So my assault, my opinion on assault tanks is they really should be assaulting. That means going straight forward at a good enough clip to get to the target. This thing is only traveling at the top speed of like 36 kilometers an hour, so it's really not getting very very far very quickly. Still, it does get to assault with the weaponry it has. And to me, this kind of seems more like a siege tank, but whatever. And uh, it is definitely above average performer in its role because it carries... So many guns, but then again, it does that at 100 tons, so it should. Problem is, speed 2, 3, even the basic motive damage that reduces your speed by 1 is cutting this thing in half. So, it's really got, a, it's got the vulnerabilities of anything that's taking motive crits on this thing is slowing it down significantly. Not like even a recoverable level. We're talking like half speed from the get-go. That's what keeps it from being a supreme performance vehicle, honestly, is the fact that it is just abysmally slow for what it does anyways. But that is the end of all 30 vehicles in technical readout 3060. We did get two supreme performances ones, and they did come from the clans, but they are they honestly do deserve the moniker supreme performance. The funny thing is the clan vehicles also uh, compromise, uh, comprised five-sixths of the worst vehicles in the book. They just did. They were, they're truly some awful vehicles the clan has designed. Probably due to their disrespect for them. In general. But overall, a lot of vehicles are average, and a lot were above average, which is what you want to see with your vehicles. Vehicles are cheap, usually good fill-ins for your, battle, for your, for your uh, forces, and they're a lot of fun to use. I'm glad we saw these. I'm hoping that a bunch of these end up, you know, getting redesigned in the upcoming Kickstarter, which is going to have vehicles. Yes! And there we have it. I'm Sleepless Ronin, and if you've enjoyed this video, please do the YouTube things. Hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And we will catch you on the next, next video. We'll catch you next time. Sayonara.